Japan against uh, the Netherlands, originally from Indonesia, Mia Odina Tiptuan. Yonakura, the number eight seed, Tiptuan, the number three seed. The favourite here, the head to head is 2 1 in uh, Odina Tiptuan's favour. Indeed, she won their last meeting in straight games last year in the Swiss Open semi final 7 1, 7 5, 7 5. Their path through to this quarter. Yonikura having a real tough one against Nicole Greta from Germany. Comfortably taking out Jill Pittard in the opening round and uh, taking out Judith Murendix of the Netherlands. 11 5, 11 7. She's going to have a lot more of a problem with this young lady who represents the Netherlands. Mia Ordina Tiptuan lives there now. And uh, very impressive her run through. Not overstretched. Hanna Pochatskova of the Czech Republic, love and one. Then a bit more difficult against Kun Wai Chi of Hong Kong. And then into overdrive again against Petra Overzier of Germany. 11 2, 11 4. There is Ordina Tiptuan. Consummate singles player, now a, a very good doubles player as well. 23 years of age, but came to the fore when she won the deciding match in Indonesia's victory over China in the 94 Uber Cup when she was just 14 years of age. But still in pretty good nick, won her last tournament, the Korean Open, and uh, blitzed Wang Chen of China. 11 love in the third game of that final. So she's in very good form. And that's been confirmed with her run this week. And Kanako Yonakura, she too won her last tournament, the uh, Waikato International in New Zealand. Beat Kari Mori, 11 4, 11 2 in the final there. Two finals before that in South Africa in Mauritius. The number eight seed here. And has been playing in the pretty good nick right the way through the week. But on the verge, if she won here, this would be the biggest win of her life. 25 years of age to get to a medal at World Championships. I'll say when I came here and looking at this match, I thought it would be pretty one-sided for Mia Odina Tiptuan. I asked Jill if she thought it was going to be as convincing as that. She said could be a problem here. Yes, I think these are fairly evenly matched and, and taking into consideration the fact that Mia Ordina, who's already played one match today, had to play her ladies doubles before this singles. She might be a little bit tired from that. And uh, well, I think this could be a very interesting encounter. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kanako Yanakura, Japan. That's Mia Ordina. And on my left, together with uh, Mia Ordina, Jonathan Chip Lottie Jonathan. Went out to Yamada and uh, Yamatora. 15-9-58 in that match that Jill was talking about. Play. Right then, singles quarter final, Yonakura to begin. when you were talking about the players right at the start of the match as they were still warming up and you saying about Mia Ordina, just 23 years of age. I just find that extraordinary when you think that she was winning Olympic silver medal back in 96 in Atlanta. She seems to have been on the tour for so long and she's still only 23. It's absolutely extraordinary.
Service over. Love all. Oh, lovely slice around the shuttle. One love. Yes, and I think it's one of Mia Ordina's trademark shots playing round the head. She really contorts her back, almost bent double in an effort to try and avoid playing a backhand. Now I know she doesn't have major back problems, I just don't know. So with a certain amount of jealousy. Oh, wow. most definitely. But she does look incredibly flexible. It's a little unlucky in the late 90s to be playing in the same Service era as Susie Suzanti. Yes, that's right. I mean, she was just coming onto the scene as Susie Suzanti was, was just really fading out of it. But, of course, that had a decided pressures because so much expected of the natural successor in Indonesia to the great Susie Suzanti, the Olympic champion, the world champion. And Mir Ordina came on the scene and, of course, enormous pressure and, and that caused its problems. First good repost from Ganako Yonakura. Saw the doubt and capitalized on it. Not only accuracy, but wonderful wow. angle on that smash. Sacrificing power for placement. Service over. One, two. Rather like Susie Suzanne, she never looks rushed on the court, has a real presence, a serenity about her. And wonderful stroke production as well. She always looks so easy as she's been on the shuttle. Two all. Good judgment. Here you can see it. Look at the angle she finds there. The bending of her back is amazing. You think she must play backhands. There was a shot in that rally there, which is a primary example. And she leans back over her head and finds a forehand smash. Yes, that's right. She's always done it, and, and she obviously feels comfortable doing it. It just makes me cringe every time I watch it. But after an unproductive start, the young Japanese lady in front now. I did with Susanti that she's playing within herself. It may be a misconception. 
No, I, I often feel the same thing. I, I think she has such a repertoire of shots. She has so many options from every corner of the court. And somehow, if she isn't winning quick rallies, I'm, I'm sort of wondering to myself, why not? record in world championships, Mia Ordina. This, her fourth world championship and fourth time she's been in a quarter-final. Service over for three. She really is looking poised Five, and full of purpose, Yonikura. There's an example of how Mira Ordina plays herself into trouble when she insists on playing around the headshot rather than a backhand. So slow to recover back into court. of doubles is a bit of a burden for her or do you think it sharpens her up certainly I think it's made her a better player I think playing doubles has sharpened up her reactions there's a whole different uh, stroke production that you have to use within doubles a shorter racket swing because you haven't got so much time but I think in these major championships especially the fact that she's played her ladies doubles first which Service I just find incredible five, how the tournament referee has allowed that to happen is just beyond me obviously there's a scheduling for uh, the t our television court that has to be taken into consideration but certainly if I was a player and if I was in singles Service and doubles I would insist on playing three, singles first five. Especially as it was a grueling experience and uh, not a pleasurable one going out. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Want to put her in the best frame of mind for the singles match. And she's not Three. started well here. <clears throat> not that sense of command you normally associate with her. Clever shot. She has such a floppy wrist as she plays these overhead shots. That's the last minute, just flicks the racket head through. Gets so much disguise from that. Service over. Five, three. Service over, three, five. Ardina, oh, tip to one, needs to get a run going here. Been a rather lukewarm start from her. Oh, yes. Four, five. Real deception there. 
and so unusual her opponent just wasn't expecting this sort of a shot how on earth she generated such power service over five four she was a little distracted from a call from the next court. But it's all part and parcel playing, even at World Championships. Any finer. Service over. Five, four, three, two, one. Service over. Five, four, three, two, one. But that's careless. Five, four. Yeah, she was in on the net on time. Well balanced. I didn't see any reason why she should make that error. Too late, but the damage was done. She's a very unusual player to play against, I would think, Mia Ordina. When she clears, she clears to such height. Sometimes the serve is way, way up high. Yes, and that means that a vertically falling shuttle is very difficult to time. And, of course, the way the shuttle falls, it's difficult to actually hit the cork first. So, of course, you get a few errors Six, from, from the fact that she's cleared the shuttle so high. Uh, she does it in the rally often to give herself time to get back to the base position. She's, she's, she thinks a lot on court. She isn't just um, a player who reacts to her opponents. She's the one that's dictating the pace and trying to command the rallies. Just wide. Service over. Five, six. Dina tip to one is just beginning to raise her game a little here. <coughs> Turning a two point deficit now into a lead and getting her on the stretch more and more. Judgment on the return Seven, of five. a very high hit serve. Service over by seven. Yanni Kira really is a great worker on court. She she fights hard for every single rally.
Interesting too that the Japanese squad have got former Chinese international ladies singles player working with them now. Beautiful shot. Service over. Cutting across and dropping it stone dead. Seven, five. Yonakura backpedaling and suddenly having to change route. Delightful shot. Absolutely brilliant. She was taking the shuttle so late and looking as if she was going to play the lift. Quite a racket swing, but just cutting across the shuttle at the very last moment. So five points in a row. Make that six. Seven points in a row from 3-5 down. Sometimes she plays if she's got something in reserve, and it really did seem as if that might have been the case there. From 3 5, she was exquisite. And the Danish, the uh, Dutch coaching staff, Martin van Dorleman, talking to Mia Ordina. Likely at the moment, key to this will be a solid start in the second game. Yeah. That's nine points in a row now. For Dina tip to one. Skills there from Odina. It was a delightful rally to watch, including a 360. Yes, yeah, that right. And, and proof that indeed she can play a high backhand. Why well, on earth she doesn't play it more often? But this cross court, attempted cross court net shot, just an indication of how much confidence she seems to have at the moment. Service over. And she looks greedy for points right now. Change of shuttle. everything little short shot short serve but nothing doing at the moment just can't get a point Out. 
two, love. game to three love up in the second game 11 successive points now for Odina for love yeah. and Yoni Kura does look a little baffled right now Seven, and her dreams, I'm afraid, blowing in the wind here. and I think now Yoni Kura has run out of ideas. I think she's almost resigned to the fact that she doesn't know how to beat Mia Ordina. Oh, that's incredible. Seven. Now, did she play for that? Wow. Well, certainly she was playing for the accurate net shot. Yeah. Uh, the racket head control, because she takes the shuttle so late, is just extraordinary. But actually just tipping the top of the, the net? From that far down, I don't think she was aiming for that. Certainly when players take the shuttle early at the net, they are aiming for a net board. Service over. Five, seven. Can she break this run then of 15 points in a row against her? A new shuttle might help. It's a fairly heavy strapping around the knee of Ordina tip to one, but doesn't seem to impede her mobility at all. as normal. I think that's strapping more for protection. I remember when Mia Ordina first injured that knee, it was in the Grand Prix Finals in Singapore. I think going back to 96, perhaps even 95. And ever since she's worn that strapping, I think more as precaution than anything else. It's amazing, she, she walks so slowly and it can sort of jackknife into action really move with agility. Oh, just incredible. And that had to be a backhand. To any other player in the world, that's right. But this is where her agility helps her so much. I mean, most players leaping back like that would just have to play a clear, let alone an accurate smash down the line. Ten. Match point. So match point. Love. After an absolutely exhilarating display, particularly in this second game. Service over. Bob. 
So, Yannick Jura looking at a mountain slope here. But maybe trying to get some kind of respectability. But she didn't bother to argue it, Yonokura. I think she can see the writing just as we all can. bothered and not a little bewildered. That was some performance. And they didn't have to work exactly very hard.